it's time once again to go racing. It does not get any better than this. The pressure is really on now. Yes, it's pole position. Lights out and we're racing in PSGL. The first lap has been absolute chaos. What an overtake. I've never seen anything like it. Side by side again. This will be settled right at the end. Silly me, silly me, sorry folks. Ah, oh, for goodness sake. Yes, sorry. Welcome everybody. Let's try that again to round number seven of the PSGL F1 season here in Jeddah. And uh, Dan, and for just talking about there between ourselves, because you couldn't hear us, about uh, the challenges of this Jeddah circuit. It really is going to be a cracker for the drivers, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Apologies about the issues there, but we'll move on from that. Uh, as I was saying, it was a really tight and twisty circuit. Really difficult for these drivers at such high speeds. Of course, first time PSGL is headed here on the PC side of things. So it's really exciting to see how these guys cope on this circuit. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of intrigue, wasn't there, when Formula One came here at the end of last year in real life. They were like, this is a bit of a wacky circuit. It's high speed, really, really long. I wonder what it's going to be like. And, and it was pretty wild, wasn't it, in real life Formula One? So I wonder if we'll have something similar tonight, Dan. It, 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 pretty likely, because PSGL is usually rather eventful, isn't it? Absolutely, of course. Uh, you know, PSGL always offers some of the best racing around and some of the most high drama, high intensity action out there. So really excited to see how uh, a whole new circuit, you know, drivers haven't got as much practice as they would have uh, on some of the other tracks. Uh, it's a new circuit for them to deal with, so it's really interesting to see how, who's going to come out on top. You know, we could see some dark horses. We could. Let's talk about it. Apologies for that, folks. It appears the stream died there, and I'm not 100% sure as to why that was. I can only assume my internet decided to cut out for a brief moment there, but thankfully, we appear to be back. So apologies for those uh, minor technical issues there. I'm guessing the internet just dropped out. But before we get into qualifying, uh, let's have a quick look at the driver standings. Jarno Otmir now shooting up the order and to the front. Uh, taking a commanding lead now over Shinaka Clay in second. Jake Benham in 39 points in third. Barry Burmad fourth on 35. Danny Beresney next on 28. Wilson Hughes, Alvaro Caraton, Diamond Shooter, Luke Smith and Yoni Tormala completing the top 10. But Jarno Watmir really getting the foot down in recent weeks since the controversy of France. He said he was going to prove a point and he certainly has in recent weeks. We're about to jump into qualifying, folks. But before we do, we'd like to ask you guys to join our grid. Uh, grid Rival is a new sponsor of PSGL. It's a motorsport fantasy league app. And PSGL will be hosting on that uh, a league for the F1 2022 Formula One season. So be sure to join that. To follow the link uh, in, the, in the slide shown here. And there's a 50 quid 
uh, up for grabs if 100 people sign up. So be sure to check that one out. And uh, race, uh, or sorry, predict against your rivals. I'll be predicting against Dan. I wonder how Dan's team lines up compared to mine. I'm, I'm going to beat you, Dan. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. But anyway, let's jump into the qualifying action. I think we should jump into that right now because there's a few drivers out there on the racetrack. And I think you guys want to see some of those out there at the minute. And I can tell you, there's a few cars making their way out there as we speak. And there is one of them. That is the Williams car of Luke Smith making his way out early doors onto the racetrack. And uh, let's see how he gets on as we have it now on our screen. So early days at the start of this qualifying. The cars just making their way out. Why is my... Why is it doing that? Was... Is going on anyway every time i try and do something it takes me away from the ah right i know what i've done i've hotkeyed something i shouldn't have hotkeyed oops um sorry folks this is a minor mistake from me here i've hotkeyed something that i shouldn't have hotkeyed um let me just change this very quickly okay there we go and we should now have the qualifying action, folks. Apologies for a few misdemeanors we've had at the start of this qualifying session. But there we are now. We do have it up on the screen. And uh, as you can see, we've got Luke Smith out there on an outlap, getting out there early days, days, but not at anyone with a representative lap time so far uh, at the start of qualifying. And as I say that, Tom Martinez crosses the line now and puts one in a 1 minute 28.2, quickly beaten by Simon Vigang off the back of that impressive P4 last time out, and the victor last time out now, Jarno Otmi across the line and puts his first representative time on the board. Chinaka Klee out there and in the final corner. What's his opening effort going to be here in Jera tonight as he comes up towards the line, currently P19, and he now goes up to second place with a 127.3. Early days in qualifying, Dan, but the majority of drivers heading out there on the medium tyre. Yep, so one and two at the moment, also one and two in the championship in that order. Jan Otmir and Shanaka Clay. Ruben Pedreno on his return, as is uh, Wilson Hughes in fourth. As I say that, Barry Boromand, uh, winner so far this season, of course, in Portugal, the first race of the season. Hasn't really been off the mark since, and of course, suffered a 10 second time penalty after last week, and that has created a big, big deficit between himself and uh, Jan Otmir and Shanaka Clay. So he's falling behind in the championship fight at the moment. So he's going to be hoping for a good day today. Uh, Jake Benham's also on a run uh, in ninth position at the moment. Of course, another driver taking a 10 second time penalty. The pair of them were supposed to be on the podium, but with their penalties for, uh, I think, some questionable driving last week has uh, dropped them down to eighth and ninth. But Benham through the second sector at the moment. Uh, through the flat out twists of this circuit really difficult to absolutely nail the track and i think he's just tapped the wall ever so slightly he's going to keep on going though a uh, little bit of paint loss never hurt anybody but through down towards uh, this little underpass love this circuit and then this corner where of course mick schumacher had his incident a little bit of a track extend for jake benham onto the drs straight where of course hamilton and verstappen had their infamous collision uh, which really has been jotted down in the history books as Benham now down towards turn number 27 for his final corner of his qualifying lap and off the exit. His teammate currently, Jan Otmir, leads the way. We'll see where he nets his position as to the line. Jake Benham goes and it is fourth place for him, but not too far off of Rumpa Drenio. Yeah, not too far off. I know it's early days, right? But Jan Otmir to be that margin clear at the front is quite ominous signs from him. Uh, early days, yes, I know, but that's a really strong effort as Daniele Haddad now slots in between he, uh, between Jarno Otmi and Shinaka Clay and lowers that gap to underneath a tenth of a second with that 27 tooth. Iman Schutter's gone 11th. It wasn't a particularly quick lap from him. Joshua Dobu in the pits at the minute. Alvaro Caraton, the Spaniard, he's out there at the minute. Won recently in WOR, but it appears he's bailed out of that lap, so he's not on a quick one at the minute. Let's see who else. We can pick up on a hot lap. Is Luke Smith on one? It certainly looks like it as he makes his way through that high speed left right where Mick Schumacher became a, came a cropper in the race last year. As he now makes his way towards the end of the lap. Look at that, hugging the inside, taking the shortest route, minimizing the number of meters he covers and now into that final corner where Max Verstappen stuck it in the wall and ended his hopes in qualifying. 
And it looks like Luke Smith has bailed out of this one as well, and he's coming into the pits. I think the majority of the drivers out there at the minute are on in-laps or out-laps. So Luke Smith in, but at the minute, it's Jarno Otmier, this man here, who is top of the timings. And we need to speak about him, Dan. We really do. Ever since what uh, happened in France, you know, the pit lane entry debacle, the controversy, he said going into Hungary, he was really going to up his game. He was really going to lift it to another level. And you have to say, he has certainly done that. Back-to-back -back victories, repeat winner, two straight races in a row, Hungary, and then in dramatic circumstances last week in Austria, he has certainly risen to the occasion, hasn't he? Absolutely. Jan Ort may, of course, a two-time, sorry, three-time make that PSGL champion and a two-time F1 Esports champion. He really is a spectacle to watch. This, uh, the Flying Dutchman uh, has been dubbed. I think it was George that coined that name, but I know that uh, I think he'd have been given it anyway to whoever is lucky enough to cast on this man. And uh, we are that lucky pair today. He's just coming on his outlap now through the final part of the track. Turn 26, which is considered a corner, even though it is a DRS straight, in towards 27. Uh, we'll see what he can do, of course. Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen having all sorts of drama in the third sector. On the run-up, though, towards turn number one, Jarno Otmir for his second flying lap of this Jeddah circuit. Yeah, here we go then. Jarno Otmir heading down towards that first corner now. Into the left hand and out to the right and then right out towards the barrier on the exit. He does that and now it's through three and then on towards four, five, six... And look at this, it's absolutely magnificent in this circuit. This first sector is so good to watch. And who better to ride on board with than the reigning F1 Esports World Champion as he now sweeps through this middle sector and on towards turn number 13 now. That long left-hander. And he now heads into that back left-hander now. Takes plenty of cup, hugs the inside like his favourite granny. Right out towards the exit through 14. And now 15, 16 and 17 coming up. It has got the most corners of any racetrack on the Formula 1 calendar this with 27. It really is a proper challenge for the drivers as Otmir now weaves his way between the barriers down to the now infamous turn 22 and 23 high-speed chicane. Stick it into the left-hander, extend as much as you can on the exit, and then hustle your way down to turns 26 and 27. Currently second, as we see some improvements from those on the soft tyre. What is Otmir going to do again, taking that shortest route down that straight, and now sweeping into turn number 27, and now it's all about the run to the line. Open up the DRS and take the shortest route once again. Tuck yourself into the left-hand side, cross the line, 126-1, smashes Duncan Holland's effort by six tenths, and Nicholas Longy right behind him is only a tenth, half a tenth further back. Really good effort from him. Yeah, it was mesmerising to watch Yano on his run. I was also trying to see if uh, there were any other competitors on a quick lap, and that indeed is the case for Barry Boroman. Currently five tenths up on his medium lap, and he's in the second sector. Josh Adowu finds himself uh, being jolted up to third. His teammate Barry Boroman is on a run at the moment. He's purple through sector one. He's had a green sector two. Uh, he's just a slight bit off of what Simon Weigang has done. He's the quickest in the second sector at the moment, currently in fourth. Off the exit and of turn 26 and in towards 27. One more fell swoop of the wheel for Barry Burman, the Iranian ace. Off the exit, now DRS enabled for him as he flies down, flat to, uh, foot flat to the floor. Barry Burman to cross the line and he goes ahead of his teammate and slots in behind Nicholas Longay uh, with just a, a, a slight gap of about two hundredths of a second. Now here's a man that's been suffering a lot with COVID in recent weeks. Wilson Hughes, the Scotsman, just like myself, but he's Dan's favourite Scot Scotsman, Wilson Hughes. It's not me, unfortunately. As Wilson Hughes crosses the line, goes fifth, 26-4. Decent effort. I saw him tweeting earlier that he's not expecting much tonight. He says that COVID really did knock the stuffing out of him. But that's a solid effort from him. Goes fifth quickest in the Alpha Tauri. So let's see what we can get from Wilson Hughes tonight. Decent start from him. We've got Jake Benham out there. If we can pick him up, there he is at the minute coming up towards turns 27 now and where is he going to slot in amongst the runners that have done a soft tyre lap time at the minute here we go then 26-1 from Jan Watt we have the time to beat no doubt about it the Dutchman is on it is, ben is Benham on it he is goes P4 126-2 but at the minute Otmir the only man into the 126-1s and that's ominous signs from him absolutely Caraton's just about to come to the line he goes into 6th position 
uh, gets himself out of the bottom five, which is beginning to take shape at the moment. Jost Nordyke, Tymon Shooter, Louis Welch and Luke Smith, then Simon Perigny are all in that bottom five. Here comes uh, the two of them on laps at the moment. Sorry, Haddad comes across the line, one in 26.391. So not as good as what he did on the mediums. He was much closer to the time of Opnia on the medium tire. Didn't quite work out. The pad man, Louis Welch, his lap is invalidated. Ruben Pedreño, his teammate, though, is out there. The Spaniard coming towards the end of the lap. Let's see what he can do, Dan. Absolutely, Ruben Pedreño on the bubble at the moment in 15th position on a 27.4. Of course, that is his medium lap, but he is uh, green through both sector one and two off the exit of the final turn for the man in the Haas, which of course, uh, that team made a big announcement, Kevin Magnussen back into Formula One, as uh, Pedreño, that's a good effort from him, into eight position ahead of Wilson Hughes by one thousandth of a second. Could that see him in to Q2 though? Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Another man out there, I was going to see Tom Martinez, but he's not on a quick lap. Good to see him in PSGL tonight. He's been a regular feature in the top tier in WR in recent times, and actually took a victory in WR last season. Uh, with a fine victory over Jake Benham. So Tom Martinez, content creator, is what he's best known for, but there's no doubt about it, he is no slouch when it comes to league racing. And let's see what he can do then as he begins a flying lap. Is Jake Benham at the end of one? I think he might be. No, he's bailed out. So let's go back and keep an eye on Tom Martinez. Great to see him featuring again in the top tier in PSGL, Jake, isn't it? Uh, Jake, Dan, isn't it? Absolutely is. Always lovely to see Tom Martinez on a grid because, uh, you know, he, he is one of the hardest workers when it comes to uh, grinding out the content and still finding time to practice for his league races. So Tom Martinez, he is someone who uh, I have the utmost admiration for, works really, really hard and he is about a tenth up on his previous best, just shy of that uh, through the first sector. Purple at the minute, he's currently in 13th position. So he's not too far away from the drop zone. Neither is Danny Berejene or Shanaka Clay. Those two we've got to watch out for. As a slight toe is going to be caught by the, the Hungarian Ferrari of Berejene in through this uh, flat-out twisty section. Not too difficult through here, but then the corners are going to come at you thick and fast because through turns 22 and 23 where he allowed a little bit of leeway with the extension. Tom Martinez now uh, coming towards the end of this run, hugging the inside wall on the left-hand side of the circuit. When he's going to open it up in towards turn number 27, getting the widest run in, kissing the apex on the inside and off the exit. Foot now flat to the floor. DRS has been enabled for Tom Martinez, currently 13th at the moment where can he see this lap and he goes into 11th with a two tenth improvement and uh, although he didn't climb up many positions that two tenths could be the difference maker between Q1 and Q2 yeah no doubt about it There's, let's not beat around the bush it will be a tall order for Tom Martinez to get out of Q1 but that will oh, certainly oh, be his target yeah. as I'm watching Shinaka Klee push hard what are you seeing I've just seen Jost Nordic hit his teammate time and shooter there I think oh. that's got to be desync uh, unbelievable. I think there's decent there. Ugh. Or Timon, Timon's weaving and apologising. Uh, uh, but yeah, Jost Nordijk's out of qualifying here. He's got wing damage and he's got a minute left. So I Ugh. think that's qualifying over for him, unfortunately. Jost Nordijk out of qualifying. What a disaster for him. But Shanaka Clay up against it. If you remember back in Hungary, he was a surprise casualty in qualifying one. He certainly won't be wanting to do that again because he took a big dent in his championship aspirations because he struggled to make the overtakes happen in the notoriously difficult Hungarian circuit to overtake. So he's on the bubble at the minute, 15th, but he's now on the soft tyre and really needs a lap to lift him up the order and make things that little bit more comfortable. Shinaka Clay then coming towards turn number 27 now. Look at that. Right out to the barrier. Opens up that final hairpin and now gets on the throttle nice and early. Watch the time then as the Aston Martin heads to the line. Can he improve? He can, but it's only P11. That might not be safe enough from Shinaka Clay. He could be in trouble with that one, couldn't he? Yeah, absolutely. The clock's about to hit zero. Time and shooters out of qualifying. Unfortunately, he's invalidated on his run. But Louis Welch, Luke Smith, Smith and Perigny are all on runs. Perigny's come to the line. He's eliminated in qualifying. So it's up to Louis Ooh. Welch, who's unfortunately invalidated there. Berezny can only go 13, so that will save Shinaka Glee. Not a good effort at all from Danny Berezny. Is he now in trouble? Shooter, as you see, not on a lap. Louis Welch is invalidated. Luke Smith is on a lap though and needs it in right now so it looks like Tom Martinez will get out of Q1 so that's a fantastic result for him uh, 
coming back here in the top tier, which is fantastic. Luke Smith then, P20, needs the time, needs it right now, finds it, goes P10, gets himself out of the bottom five, and that means we lose Duncan Hofflin, Simon Perigny, Jos Nordyke, Feynman Schutter, the two colliding Astons, uh, Alfa Romeos have let each other down, and Louis Welsh drops out of qualifying as well. But the man on top, Jarno Otmi, a superb effort from him. As Simon Vagant crosses the line, he's already through, you know, completed anyway, and he goes P3, not far away from the top time of Jarno Otmir and Nicholas Longy. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, crucially making it through, Danny Berejnay uh, just about avoids relegation into the bottom five by one position. He was a few tenths clear of Duncan Hofland, uh, but that's not, not good signs for the Hungarian, of course, who took a podium earlier this season uh, in his home Grand Prix of Hungary. Uh, so he's not going to be too pleased with that. Neither is Shanaka Clay, I'd imagine. 13th position uh, is not the best place when you're in a championship fight. And two of your main rivals are uh, what, one, one and four. So uh, Shanaka Clay and Danny Berejnay, those are two drivers I'm still looking out for. Uh, to sort of, They need to get their act together, I think. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They're uh, under a lot of pressure at the end of this qualifying session in Q1. And I've got to say, there's a lot of stories emerging from this first part of qualifying. And the biggest of them all is Jarno Otmia looks in fine form. Now, I've been watching all season long and there's been cases where Otmia has just creaked into it in the final part of qualifying. But this is a very strong statement. Quickest in the first run, quickest in the second run in Q1, and on top, the only man in the point ones, Longy, Vigang, Buraman, Benham, the top five, Wilson Hughes, Joshua Dowu, Daniele Haddad, Alvaro Caraton, and Ruben Pedreño. Then it's Liam Parnell, Luke Smith, Shinaka Clay will be disappointed by that, Tom Martinez, and Danny Beresney. Out go Hofflin, Perigny, Nordyke, Schutter, and Louis Welsh in this part of qualifying. But as we said, Dan, we want to talk... Uh, before we jump into Q2, about some of the talking points, Otmir in ominous form, Clay, not the most convincing. He'll need to improve big time. And well done, Tom Martinez, getting through. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's not the best signs for uh, Shanaka Clay to be eliminated in... Uh, in well, not He's not eliminated. But, but uh, if that was Q2, if, if he's 13th. If that's Q2, he's out. And, uh, of course, we got Q2 coming up now. I'd also like to give a special mention to... Uh, to Wilson Hughes, you know, he's been suffering with COVID for the past week and he still managed to bag himself P6 in Q1. So uh, I'm looking at my Taz right now and he's uh, got some really good sectors, really competitive and close to uh, Jan Otmir and Nicholas Longe. They occupied uh, the fastest sectors in that session. So uh, we'll see what he can do throughout qualifying. But I think Q2 is about to get underway, Andy. Yeah, Q2 about to get underway. But I've got to say, very, very... Impressive from Otmir so far. He's looking strong, as is Nicholas Longy. He's also looking very, very strong at this stage. Um, but, uh, yeah, And Simon Vigang had a couple of really good runs too. But Danny Beresny, you touched on that briefly. Big improvement needed. As you said, podium in his home race back in Hungary. If he wants to be in the podium today, he will need a much stronger qualifying than what he showed in Q1. Thankfully, he just needed to be in the top 15. And that's exactly what he was. And he got himself into the next part of qualifying. This is where it begins to hot up. This is where we start to see the drivers consider various strategies. Remember, if you're in the top 10 at this part of qualifying, you must start on the tyre you qualified on from this session. So let's see if there's any mix in the strategies. Let's jump into the action then. Alvaro Caraton is out there right now. The first man on track. Here he is in the Williams car at the minute. Let's see what he can do. And the other 15 drivers to try and get themselves into the final part of qualifying. Of course, it's a top 10 shootout in Q3. Five drivers will be eliminated in this session. Uh, that'll be 11th down to 15th. So drivers have got to put in their laps. Of course, we only saw one runner not set a time in Q1. That was Louis Welch, who unfortunately uh, just kept on invalidating. So we'll see if any of these drivers have similar issues. But I think it's smart from Alvaro Caraton to come out this early. He's got uh, acres of clear air in front of him. And when you're at a circuit where you need high downforce to go throughout these corners, uh, it's good that you're not following in the, in the dirty air of any other cars. Yep, absolutely. It really is a, a track you don't want to be in any dirty air at all. It's a really high speed and certainly it is at the racetrack. Uh, there was a few, actually a few concerns that overtaking could be difficult at Jeddah in real life Formula 1, but we saw plenty of drama from, from Hamilton and Verstappen in particular around uh, the Jeddah circuit. So uh, encouraging signs perhaps for this first PSGL PC race. I'm sure we will have plenty of excitement. There always is in PSGL as uh, Alvaro Caraton 
makes his way up to the final couple of corners and is about to get things underway for his lap. You can see him there going right out to the edge of the white line just to extend as much as he can to give himself uh, as much time on the throttle down this straight. And then, of course, by the time he hits the line, he'll be up at 195 miles an hour, as you can see on the screen, into the braking zone for that turn one. And I tell you what, it could be quite an interesting turn one here in Jeddah, couldn't it, Dan? It's uh, quite a clumsy looking first couple of corners extremely tight extremely twisty the drivers will need to be pretty wary of uh, what's around them won't they yeah absolutely they're going to be need, they're going to need to be uh, a bit extra careful in at this race because i'm looking at taz right now and it's got a weather forecast and it includes the race light rain throughout what? the entire thing it, rain it, in jeddah what no, you can't be. You can't be serious. Well, I tell you what, Dan, uh, I'm in trouble because uh, when we flew out to Jeddah, I never packed the jacket. I, I left it back in Scotland. I never packed the jacket. So uh, if it starts raining, that will be a big, a bit of a shock. I'm not even sure if the teams packed the wet tyres. In fact, the drivers. I know they usually prepare for every eventuality, but I don't think they'll have prepared for wet conditions around here. Do you think Jarno Watmier was sat there practicing light rain around Saudi for PSGL? I doubt it. It's a question to ask him later, that's for sure. Yeah, it's uh, certainly going to bring up a whole bunch of surprises uh, come race time. But in Q2, we do have a runner at the moment of Alvaro Caraton. He's just coming through the last sector now. Uh, currently, at the moment, uh, he's not purple. Uh, by any stretch of the means, that belongs to uh, Daniele Haddad. As across the line goes uh, Alvaro Caraton, and it's a 26.4. But I believe Adou is close behind as well uh, on his run. As is Barry Broman there. They're all setting laps at the minute. It's very difficult to keep up, but I think Broman's the next cross the line. He goes ahead of uh, Alvaro Caraton. Shanaka Clay in third. I think uh, we're going to see Adou coming up to the line next. Uh, as well as Daniele Haddad. So to come across the line, the next few drivers run. It is going to be Haddad up first. He comes into the pit. Idowu goes in to third. So the first runs are qualifying. They're all coming to a close. I think everyone else, unfortunately, has invalidated. Yeah, so a lot of invalidations out there at the minute. It's Tom Martinez on one. He was crossing the line, but I think he invalidated it also. What about Luke Smith? Invalidated as well. So yeah, six runs so far. And uh, it's Barry Brumand on top with that one... 26-3, uh, Jan Watmere did not make his way out of the pits for that opening run. He stayed in the pit lane and uh, nobody able to get near the 26-1 we saw from Jan Watmere in Q1. We usually see a steady progression in terms of lap times and I think I think we will probably see a pole time in a, with a 25-9, something like that maybe. We'll have to wait and see um, come the end of qualifying. But 26-3, decent opening effort from Barry Burnaman to start the session, no doubt about that. Nicholas Longy, I believe, is out there, but he's also invalidated his run, so it's not going to plan for him at this stage. I'm just looking around, seeing if we can find anyone else that might possibly be on a lap, but I think they're all on in laps and they've abandoned their first runs. So, Buramant on top early doors, but plenty of time yet for that to change around. But uh, yeah, wow, incredible that we might be getting some wet weather. Here in Saudi Arabia, we've never, never in Formula One in real life had a wet race in any of the desert venues. Uh, I think on one Friday afternoon they had a wet um, Abu Dhabi practice session, or damp at least, but I, I think that was as far as it ever went. So I'm a bit stunned by that. As Tom Martinez, is he on a lap at the minute? No, nope, he's on a slow one. He's going to come back to the pits. And I think that will be the end of his run and the end of everyone's runs for the first few laps here. But interesting to see a lot of people invalidating Dan. I wonder if time penalties will be a major factor come round the race because, of course, high-speed corners, easy to cut, but, uh, of course, the barriers are there, so if you start cutting corners, you're going to be knocking the suspension apart, aren't you? Yep, I think uh, these drivers, they've got to be a bit a bit extra careful when it comes to this uh, kit, of course. Uh, it is a newer track. It only came out, I think, October or November. Uh, on the F1 games, so there's a lot less practice time that's gone into this circuit than there has been, you know, tracks like Silverstone and Monza that have been on the Formula 1 games since those guys were, uh, since those guys, were, you know, were they're in primary school or something, so, uh, you know, it's a whole new experience, they've got to be a little bit extra careful because penalties can come thick and fast, you know, you could be sitting on one warning for an entire race, then it track extend twice, and boom, you have a three second time penalty, so it really can punish you uh, with the strict corner cutting rules, but uh, finally we do have some runners on outlaps, the lead is the Ferrari of Danny Berejnay, uh, in trouble 
in Q1. Yeah. Uh, came 15th in qualifying, but he's got a, a blank slate now. No time on the board at the minute, but he is just about to come to the end of his outlap. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. Uh, and a bit of trouble he was in Q1. Not very convincing. I think that's the best way of talking about it. He and the man behind him on the road, Chinaka Clay. In fact, no, it's Haddad that's behind him on the road, not Clay. But, uh, yeah, both those two and a bit of bother. So Beresney needs to lift his game here and deliver a really strong lap. Jake Benham also about to start a lap along with Danny Beresney and Daniele Haddad. So let's see what Beresney can do. The Hungarian driver who was really happy to return to the podium a few weeks ago in the Hungara ring. And they'll be looking to try and build on those kind of results and really start to get back to the form we know he's capable of as Beresney pushes hard through that first sector. It really is a challenge. I love watching the cars attack that section. A 29-9 through that sector and now into that turn 13, which really does separate the men from the boys. Onto the throttle he goes and Beresney looking to try and deliver an important lap as he heads around there now. Danny Beresney going for it out there at the minute. How is Jake Benham getting on behind him? He's invalidated his lap, so it's not going to plan for him. What about Daniele Haddad? He's also invalidated the lap. So again, invalidation's proving to be key around this circuit. Plenty of them. So Beresney will get the chance to complete this. Ah, oh, no he won't. Commentator's curse at the worst time. Invalidates it through the high speed 22 and 23, and he'll have to go again. Yeah, unfortunate. Uh, he was on. He was on a quick one, uh, but there were drivers going quicker. I think we do have uh, Nicholas Longay on a run at the minute. He was purple through sector one. That's swiftly been taken away by Alvaro Caraton, who's on his second push lap of the evening. So we've got to watch out for the uh, the Red Bull making his return. Didn't race last week in Austria, but he's back today with his teammate Liam Parnell. Both of them in Q2 and uh, trying to get out of the bottom five you as can't. through turns number 22 and 23 and invalidation for man. Longay. Unfortunate there again. These drivers really struggling with the track limits here. Uh, but I think, yeah, that's, all, that's really unfortunate that it has ended up that way. Oh. Jan Ortmir is about to come to the line. He's uh, on uh, green sectors all around and he goes to the top of the order uh, with that stunning uh, sector three he's got about two tenths quicker than anyone else through there oh he's on form tonight there's no doubt about it he's on form tonight he is really pounding in laps raising the bar ruthlessly again and again three laps he's done and every single one bang 26 one bang 26 one bang p1 absolutely flying here comes Vigang. he goes p3 26-3 from him. What can Barry Bunneman do in response to Otmir? Now, if you remember, at the start of the season, Barry Bunneman, in my opinion, and I think even Jarno Otmir wouldn't be too scared to admit that Barry Bunneman in qualifying almost had his number. And to be fair, he was really, really strong at times at the start of the season. But in recent weeks, Otmir really has improved. And today, he's in top form as Adolo now gets within range of Otmir. Can Barry Bunneman get even closer than that? Or will he go in between the top two? Bunneman really needs to raise his game here because Otmir is undoubtedly in top form tonight. Here comes Bunneman round the final corner. Can he get into the 26 ones? Can he go even faster than that? Bunneman for the line, 26-2. Not even enough to beat his teammate, Josh Adolu. So at the minute, quite clearly, advantage to Jarno Otmir. He's in fine form, isn't he? If you ask me throughout rounds number one to five, uh, who I thought at the end of the season would be champion, I'd immediately say Barry Bunneman. Uh, but now in these last two weeks, Jan Ortmir, uh, he really has found his form. And I said it after Hungary that uh, I think he's going to go on a bit of a tear. And uh, he shows no signs of stopping at the minute. So I think Jan Ortmir, you know, I'm not too sure as to who's going to be the champion at the end of the season. I still have faith in Barry uh, to at least get some good, good results. But who's champion at this point, I'm not too sure. And that is all down to just how competitive and how quick Jan Ortmir has been in these past few weeks. Yeah, it's incredible. It really is. I mean, I mean, Otmir, it's almost like he's turned a switch. I mean, how do you switch this kind of thing on and off? He's just turned up and really raised his game. Two wins in the bounce. Now tonight, looking, honestly, the best I've seen him this season by far. I mean, he's just turning up and going bang, bang, bang. <laughs> like a machine. Hot lap after hot lap. And yeah, I'm very impressed. And, uh, you know, I mean... There comes a point where you wonder if you can keep being impressed by Jarno Otmir, but tonight, so far, 
Yes, but of course, it's all about Q3. That's when it counts. And let's see if he will deliver. Are the likes of Barry Bruneman, Joshua Dolwu, Nicholas Longhi just building up for that final run at the end of qualifying? I suppose we'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, very ominous signs at this stage. Who else we got out there in the lap? Tom Martinez slowing down. I thought he was about to start one. Doesn't appear so. Adolu, Bruneman. Nope, don't think they're on good quick laps. So at the minute, it's Shinaka Clay, I think, that might be one of the first round to start another flying lap. So here he is at the minute. Clay, eighth at the minute. And I've got to say, so far, following up what we saw in Q1, not looking particularly strong. Slowest of the eight times so far. Yeah, of course, uh, the rest of the runners in behind him. Uh, from 9th down to 15th, haven't put times in yet. So uh, Shanaka Clay, whilst on paper, he is in Q3 at the minute. Of all the runners who have set times, he is uh, eliminated as, uh, oh, uh, well, he's the slowest of them all, but Josh Ado, I've just seen, is retired in the pit lane. Uh, so he thinks he's done enough to get himself into the final part of qualifying. We only have 2 minutes and 10 seconds left in Q2. So uh, these drivers have got one more opportunity to go for a lap. Shanaka Clay, this is his chance. Through the first few corners, he goes. And now off the exit and in towards the blind left-hander. You're not, you're not quite sure where your apex is. And then that carries through throughout the next twisty. It's a right, then a left into a double left and off the exit in towards another right onto a short little DRS straight here. And uh, he gets a little bit of time to breathe as he comes to the end of the first sector. Luke Smith's gone purple through here, but Shanaka Clay is not too far behind. He's about 200 off of the Williams at the moment. Through now, down towards uh, the next part of the circuit, sector two, where the, uh, the circuit loops back on itself, flying throughout the next part of the track. He a slight tap of the ball for Shanaka Clay. Luke Smith has uh, bottled his lap. He's got out of the way. So Shanaka Clay, he's got a whole bunch of clear Ooh, air in front of him. And he's finding some improvements throughout sector two. He's almost three tenths up on his time. He's managed to find the time throughout uh, turn number 23 and down in towards the DRS straight Shanaka Clay. He could see himself out of qualifying if he hasn't nailed this final sector. Currently eighth, slowest of all runners who have put in time so far. Off the exit now with the final corner turn number 27. Foot now flat to the floor. DRS enabled for Shanaka Clay. Can he see himself up into the upper echelons? And indeed he does. He goes ahead of Barry Borman and in towards P3 with a 1 minute 26.286. Yeah, it's much better. It's much, much, be much, much better from Shinaka Clay. And boy, it needed to be. He's been pretty scrappy up till now. Here comes Alvaro Caraton then. What's he going to do at the end of the lap? Here he comes. Luke Smith's gone ninth. We know he abandoned that one. Alvaro Caraton to the line. This is good. This is very good from Caraton. Top of the times, Alvaro Caraton. What a lap that is from him. And he shoots to the top of the standings. What a super effort from him. Who else we got out there at the minute? Wilson Hughes is on one. And Jake Benham. Let's go to him. He's at the end of the lap. And he's done a 56-8 through the middle sector. And that means we could be on for another driver joining that group in the 1 minute 26 ones. It was only Altmir in there till recently. Caraton's joined them. Can Benham also join in? He can. 126-1. He goes P3. And books his place in the next session. Longy now. Oh, I've missed him. And he's gone P3. So Longy, up he goes. Another place and we're at the end of the session. So we need to pick up the likes of Wilson Hughes, who's at the minute going out of qualifying. Liam Parnell going out of qualifying and in the final corner. So this is the crucial part of the session. Parnell going out. Can he knock Simon Vangang into a little bit of difficulty? Parnell for the line, currently P13. He can knock Vangang into a bit of difficulty. But he's in the final corner and finding a tenth of a second. So Vangang, can he knock Liam Parnell straight back out of qualifying? Up to the line he goes. He can. He goes P7. Parnell is out for sure. Wilson Hughes is out there on a lap. Also out there at the minute, I think Luke Smith is as well. He's coming up to the line. Luke Smith, can he go through? Beresney's out. And now Buramand is onto the bubble and really, really, really is shaky and needs a lap because Haddad is out there on one, as is Tom Martinez. He's abandoned it though, and he will not make it through. Not going to happen for Beresney. Buramand needs to make sure he can get himself through. Where is Haddad? He's behind Bruneman on the road. Bruneman currently P10. Makes himself safe. Can Haddad get through? He can. And hey, knocks Shinaka Clay out of qualifying. Daniele Haddad knocks his teammate and championship contender Shinaka Clay out of qualifying. It's another effie qualifying for Shinaka Clay. Clay, Beresley, Smith. 
Parnell and Martinez out in qualifying. I think I might have cursed uh, Shanaka Clay and Danny Berjnay saying that they needed to get their act together if they wanted to be in Q3. And they've just missed out by a fraction of a second. Shanaka Clay, his gap to Simon Vigang is about two hundredths of a second and that was the difference maker between a shot at pole and being outside of the top 10 in qualifying really unfortunate for the uh, for the pair of them to go out in this fashion and, uh, and indeed for Luke Smith Liam Parnell and Tom Martinez who wasn't able to get time on the board but that's got to be heartbreaking for, for a man who sees himself in a championship fight yep it's just not happening at the minute for Shanaka Clay 15th on the grid in Hungary 11th on the grid tonight in Jeddah Clearly not enjoying this circuit, and it is not going to plan for him. Danny Beresney, the other big casualty, but in truth, you could see it coming from Q1. They weren't on the ball then, they weren't on the ball here, but I tell you what, they weren't far away. Two tens covering those 12 drivers. Look at that, that's ridiculously close. Caraton on top, Opmia, Haddad, Longy, Benham, Bruneman sixth, Pedreño, Edowu, Wilson Hughes, and Simon Vigang. Five drivers! On the 26 ones. What a shootout for pole position we're going to have here. Out of qualifying. Shanaka Clay. What a shock that is. Danny Beresney. Luke Smith. Liam Parnell. And Tom Martinez failed to get a lap in. He also joins the other four on the sidelines. Uh, but wow. What a qualifying session that was. We said that uh, the likes of Clay and Beresney were in trouble in Q1. And we were proved right. They struggled really badly. Yeah. Absolutely, but even so, the entire field spread was just over two tenths Absolutely. of a second. Shanaka Clay missed out by one and a half tenths to Yano, no, to Avaro Caraton, who was pole at the end of it. So the difference maker is huge. The top eight was within a second, uh, not even a second, within a tenth of a second of the leader. So it's not the end of the world to be eliminated in Q2, uh, knowing that you have the pace to contend with them along a race trim. So it they just got to get their heads down, work on the strategy, try and make them make their way into the top 10 come race time. It's going to be difficult on the intermediate tyres, which we're likely going to see. But uh, if anyone can do it, it's going to be the likes of Clay, Berejnay, Parnell. Those guys, we've got to watch out for them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Big opportunity for them to come charging back through and uh, from, from the outside the top 10. That will certainly be their plan. They'll be annoyed it's not going to be dry because they would have got fresh tyres. But we're hearing wet conditions in Saudi. Unbelievable. But we've got the third part of qualifying coming right up, folks. Five drivers within a, in the 26 ones. How close can you get? And uh, the top 10, around a tenth and a half apart. I mean, it's any of these guests who's going to get ball. It really is. But Dan, it's time for us to get off the fence and see who we think is going to get pole. Time for you guys watching to comment in the chat and tell us who you think is going to get pole. Dan, I'm going to be honest. I'm impressed with Altmir. I think he's got something in the tank. I think we're going to see a 25 from him. I think he's going to get pole. You know what? I think I've got to go with you here. I, I always like to, to, you know, I never like to pick the same option. But it is so hard to deny Jano Altmir at the moment. He is on fire. The man on form at the moment. So we do have to put his name in the hat for pole position. You also got to watch out for, for Avaro Caraton, of course, topped Q2, uh, as well as Barry Burman, you know, he's always in the mix in qualifying, Nicholas Longe as well. So you can never count anyone out. I'm seeing it in the chat, uh, there's Yano Otmir, Yano, Yano, Yano. Yeah, everyone loves Yano. Uh, I think uh, Yano, he's the fan favorite to be uh, on pole here. Yeah, everybody's going for Altmir. I think I think for once the chat and us and everybody universally agrees. He's in fine form. Let's jump into it and see if we're right. You never know in PSGL. Anything can happen. Let's jump into it now. It is qualifying three, the third part of this qualifying session. This is where uh, it really does get to the business end of the qualifying section. This is where the best rise to the top and really have to deliver under serious pressure. The chat is full of Yarno Pull. Yarno Pull, 25, he's gonna do a 25. Let's see what he can do. Is he gonna get the pull? Or is someone out there going to deny him? We've said already, Bruneman has been in fine form at times this season. He's at a great pace. Longy's looking like he's a very, very strong Target for one of the strong places too. Caraton's in good form. He's shown in WOR his good form recently. What can he do as well? So, so many drivers contesting this pole position. Remember, only one and a half tens covered the top ten drivers. So there was nothing in it. So this should be very, very, very exciting. 
in the closing parts of qualifying. This is what it's all about. This is what they've all been building up for. It's a street track, Dan. And they've been building up, waiting to deliver the ultimate lap, take all the risks out on this final lap in qualifying. And we are really excited for this. Yeah, and absolutely. Avaro Caraton is going to be the first one to test the waters on a fully rubbered in circuit. The cars are going to be as quick as they possibly can be here in Q3 and off the exit at the final corner to begin his first run in Q3, the first lap of the session. It's Alvaro Caraton on the run up towards turn number one. We'll see what kind of entry he gets through here. Very nice indeed. He was off the throttle throughout the entirety of turn number two. Now picks it back up on the run up towards the next left-hander where he's going to be twisting and weaving throughout the streets of Jeddah. Here he goes, the blind double left hander in towards the next right we have to lift slightly and then down towards the drs straight for alvaro caraton drs now enabled and he opens up the steering to go in towards the hairpin corner at uh, about 150 kilometers per hour in fifth gear picks up the throttle and keeps it so tight knit to the wall you wonder how they don't make contact with it through the next right hander he goes and up towards where drivers have been scraping the barriers a number of times today but he's managed to keep his tires nice and clean in towards now the second sector where he can take a little bit of a breather through here and of course it is a 56 Point nine throughout sector one and two so far for our Caraton off the exit now and in towards the final part of the circuit sector three where he's just got one more braking zone and one more fell swoop of the wheel until he's over with this lap. Uh, Alvaro Caraton's look really competitive on this run so far and off the exit of the final corner for the final time and opening up the DRS once more to come up to the line. We'll see what Alvaro Caraton can do and that is the benchmark he's laid down the gauntlet. It's a 26.2. Well, here comes Jarno Otmier then. I've seen some good times from him so far in this session. Can he beat the 26.2 from Alvaro Caraton? Can he beat it? Oh, he's the oh. first man into the zeros. 126.078 from Jarno Otmier. The gauntlet has been laid down to his rivals. What can Joshua Dolma do in response? He can't respond because he's invalidated the lap. Barry Burimando can respond and he's in turn 27 now and he's now making the run to the line in the McLaren. Barry Buriman, the Iranian driver to the line beats him! 126-0-4-3 Buriman saves the best till last and takes pole position for now in qualifying. There's plenty of time for that to change but it's first blood Buriman unless Jake Benham can steal it back, Benham for the line, 26-3, only P4, but Barry Burnaman takes the first blow in, first part, in this final part of qualifying, and he beats him by a few hundreds of a second, Burnaman on top. Absolutely sensational stuff from the pair of them to go into the one minute, 26 point zeros. impressive stuff from the pair of them, but they do have one more effort at a lap. Uh, Wilson Hughes and Joshua Doe were unfortunately invalid on their runs. So that is the first part of Q3 over and done with. The quickest sectors uh, belong to Jake Benham in Sector 1 with a 29.719. Barry Burman in Sector 2 with a 27.0. And then Sector 3 was all Jarno Otmir with a 29.1. So it's all evenly spread throughout the grid. Alvaro Caraton finds himself in third without a single purple sector to his name. So uh, these drivers are oh so close on this grid, but they're all going to be heading back into the pit lane, strapping on their final set of Red Wall boots, and they're going to be headed out onto circuit for one last time in qualifying. Brilliant stuff. This is what we've all been waiting for. We've gone through Q1, Q2, Q3, and now it's all down to this. And at the minute, look at that in the top left corner, folks. Three hundredths of a second between Burnamand and Otmia. What a lap from Barry Burnamand. Let's be honest, we both in the comedy box had this down as Otmia. There's time for it still to be Otmia, but Burnamand, we spoke about this, building up slowly. Are some of the drivers just building up to take all the risks on the final run? It looks like it. Burnamand at the minute on top. NP1, and he's showing this season already, especially in the early part of the season, that he is very, very strong and probably will be one of Jarno Otmier's biggest challengers going into F1 Esports this year. He's that good. Absolutely, Barry Burman. Uh, he really had McLaren on his back at some point last season yeah. in, uh, in F1 Esports. Uh, if you think back to that, he was the, the star man 
uh, in the orange papaya outfit. And uh, that is carried over to uh, PSGL. Not to say that Josh Adowu hasn't carried his weight. Of course, he sees himself in Q3. There's only, uh, what I'm seeing, two teams with uh, both drivers in the final part of qualifying. Uh, that is the McLaren team themselves. And then uh, Mercedes as well with Otmir and Benham. But I'm seeing activity down at the pit lane. We're going to get to see some more runners out on track. There's uh, Rune Pedreño and Alvaro Caraton leaving the pit lane, as is one of the Mercedes. I think that might be... Gee, no, sorry, that's, uh, that's actually Daniele Haddad coming out of the pit lane. They got confused with the cars there. Yep, so Alvaro Caraton making his way out nice and early. And if you're new to the, the world of league racing, folks, and you're wondering why he's going this slowly and he's revving the engine, the reason for it is to drain as much fuel as possible. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's a disaster for Caraton. He's been done for illegal blocking Aww. against Ruben Pedreño. That's very harsh from the game. And he gets a five-place penalty. He'll be gutted about that. He was one of the drivers contesting for pole position here. I was just about to explain what he was doing. All the drivers do it. They go really slowly. They drain as much fuel out of the car as they can. The more you rev, you, you rev the engine, the more fuel you empty. So they've got just enough for a lap and no more. And unfortunately, Caraton has been very unfortunate and received himself a five-place grid penalty automatically from the game. And that's a real shame for him, isn't it, Dan? Yeah, I think uh, although Michael Matsy's lost his position in a real Formula 1, I think he's still got his place uh, on the F1 2021 game. So uh, Comas has got to sort that out because that's not fair for Alvaro Caraton to uh, be done with that penalty. Uh, maybe we'll see a restart, but I'm not too sure. Uh, who knows at this point? However, there are runners on outlaps at the minute. I believe Ruben Pedreño is the lead car, uh, followed by Haddad and Wilson Hughes. And uh, Wilson Hughes, you've got to give it to the man for actually racing today, uh, given that he, he was out with COVID. Uh, I don't think it was last week, but he has had COVID this week. And uh, to be stepping in the, uh, in the rig to be racing today and still finding himself in Q3, that is very, very damn impressive. He's about to begin on his lap following Ruben Pedreño. Yep, so Wilson Hughes then begins that flying lap then. Great to see him in the final part of qualifying. What can the Scotsman do as he makes his way through that first sector now? We've got a minute and a half to go in this session and the top runners and riders, Barry Bruneman is about to start his flying lap. Jarno Opmia a little bit further back on the road on his out lap. He'll be one of the last drivers, I think, to see the, the, the checkered flag. So we'll just keep a bit of an eye on some of the heavy hitters going for pole position. But uh, let's see with the drivers that are currently on laps. Ruben Pedreño is currently attempting a bit up in what he did through the first sector last time round. So at the minute, might just squeeze into the 26 threes. Let's see how his middle sector lines up then for the Spaniard in that Haas car. So let's see then, give an eye on that top right hand corner. What's it going to be? You want to be in the low 56s at this point to be threatening. And that is pretty strong from Ruben Pedreño. So is he now going to be joining? Oh, no, he won't be joining that group up front because he's went and invalidated what was beginning to look like a pretty tidy lap. Daniele Haddad is also invalidated. Wilson Hughes has not, though. So let's see what the Scot can do as he makes his way up to the final corner on this Jeddah Cornish Street circuit. Through turn 27, he goes now. Doesn't do a Max Verstappen and hit the wall. He'll now run to the line. Wilson Hughes with a 26-0 to be. Can he get anywhere near it? He crossed the line now goes P4, 1 minute 26 point 2 from him, Caraton behind him on the road, he's going quickly, very quickly, 125 8 Alvaro Caraton, what a time that is from him, what a lap from Caraton, let's hope he can get that penalty removed, it's going to take a tall order for Barry Bruneman or Jarno Opmier to get near that that was absolutely sensational from Alvaro Caraton what can Bruneman do in response then at the end of qualifying, the only man in the 25 8s is Caraton can Bruneman join him? He can get into the nines, but he can't displace him. So at the minute, Caraton on top. Here comes Nicholas Longy. He is on target to challenge. Longy, can he beat Caraton? No, he misses out by a fraction. But we must go to Otmir. He's been the talk of up. qualifying. We're expecting him now to deliver the pole position. We've all said he's in fine form tonight. Everyone in the chat thinks he's going to get pole. Even we think so in the commentary box. Otmir, is he going to do it to the line now? 
He does! Oh. By half a tenth, Opmier's on pole, beats Alvaro Caraton, left it late, 125-8, Opmier on pole, unless Jake Benham can deny him, he's not on course to do so, where will Benham go? He goes P6, and it's all over here in qualifying. Although, Ruben Pedreño is on a second lap, and it's a very, very, very good lap from Ruben Pedreño. He hits the wall at the final corner. That might scrub off some speed. Can Pedreño get near Otmir and Caraton? Across the line, 26-1, hitting the barrier cost him. Only goes P7. Haddad goes P6. And I think, after all of that, that might be the end of qualifying. Wow, what a session. Otmir does it again. Yeah. How about that? From Jarno Otmer, going on top by, uh, by, by, by four hundredths of a second ahead of Alvaro Caraton. Uh, we've had confirmation that unfortunately we're not restarting the session. Uh, but Jarno Otmer, we just, we got to talk about that man. I think every good esports has got a solidified GOAT and uh, F1 esports. Surely that has got to be Jarno Otmer himself because he is whacking out laps like these on the regular. And he's set pole once again in PSGL, lighting up the grid. He starts ahead of Nicholas Longay in second and Barry Burman in third. Wow, what a session. What a session. 25-8. We saw a few eyebrows raised when Caraton did it. We didn't think we'd go, the, go that low. We did, though. Otmir right in there. Longay almost did so, too. Burman in fourth after all that. Josh Adol with uh, Haddad, B6. Then it was Jake Benham, Ruben Pedreño, Simon Weigang and Wilson Hughes. Wow, what a session. What a session we have just witnessed, Dan. Very exciting stuff. And, uh, well, we thought it would be Otmia, and it turns out, for once, we were right. <laughs> yeah, for uh, for once in our in our commentary careers, we've actually got one of the predictions correct, and uh, I'm personally quite proud about this one. I don't know how you're feeling, but, you know, we never get this type of stuff right because it's so unpredictable in PSGL. But I think uh, there are only three guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and Jan Otmir going fast on a circuit. Yeah, well, I've just looked at the weather, and it is indeed wet. Uh, so that's quite incredible, folks. We are going to have a wet race coming up in a few moments' time. The formation lap about to get underway here in PSGL. But before we do, let's uh, just remind you, folks, that we've got a brand new thing coming up pretty soon a chance to join our psgl fantasy league for the f122 season with grid rival uh, grid rival is a motorsport fantasy league app uh, and psgl will be hosting an f1 2022 fantasy league for everyone to battle between each other there's a 50 pound prize for the winner if 100 people sign up so be sure to, to, to sign up and join in because uh, yeah i'll be in there and i'll be fighting against danfield and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Dan. Do you think you're going to beat me? Yeah, I'm, I can't wait to completely smash your team out of the water oh, okay. uh, come the end of the season. And uh, I'm very excited to sign up myself after this race is done. It's about to get underway very soon. But uh, yeah, a new uh, a new sponsor of PSGL. Really excited to have them on board. Yeah, looking forward to the brand new F1 season. And uh, yeah, so signing up for the Fantasy League uh, is, is always part of that. It gets the hype going. It gets the blood pumping ahead of a brand new F1 season. So, yeah, I'll be sure to join that. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll have a good good fun debating that in the commentary box over the coming races, won't we? But anyway, folks, let's jump into the action then. The drivers are on their formation lap now. And as you can see, it is intermediate conditions. <laughs> <laughs> no, do not adjust your television, folks. It is literally raining in Saudi Arabia. What on earth is going on here? Anything can happen, and it usually does in PSGL. Yeah, I'm actually just uh, looking up uh, looking up some statistics. Uh, there's about five days a year in Jeddah uh, where there is rain. And I guess we were on uh, we were on one of the the, the unlucky five because we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be getting our raincoats out. I didn't pack mine. I know you didn't pack yours either, but uh, it's, it's surreal, really. I mean, I'm not used to seeing uh, these desert circuits in 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 wet conditions. And uh, just to confirm, it's gonna be like this for the entire race, light race throughout the Grand Prix. Uh, th th yeah, for the 60 minute window. So uh, these drivers. 
they're, uh, they're going to have to get comfortable in their cockpits there because they're going to be drenched throughout this race. Wow. <laughs> wow. 25 laps ahead of the drivers there in intermediate conditions around the Saudi circuit. I mean... This is crazy. I mean, this is absolutely crazy. I don't, I'm going to ask this question to our viewers in the comment section and, and to you, Dan. Has anyone ever raced on Abu Dhabi, Bahrain or Saudi Arabia on dynamic weather and had a wet race? Because I, for one, have never. And I've been playing Formula One by games by Codemasters for 10 years. 12 years, actually. How old does that make me feel? Never had it. But here we are. Crazy. I think uh, I think there was a Tia McMardock video uh, where he had rain in Abu Dhabi, but that's the only time when I've seen dynamic dynamic weather. I think he had a league race as well uh, on F1 2020, so he's uh, he's he's experienced in the wet weather conditions. Maybe some drivers are on call to him right now, but uh, I'd imagine a lot of these guys have got absolutely no experience in the wet here. Yeah, well, I'm interested to see, um, well, I'm interested to talk to the drivers on the top three after the race and ask them if it's something they've ever done. Have they ever raced in the wet? Have you ever practiced in the wet around Saudi? I think the only time they would maybe do it is when they're hunting world records on time trial in the wet. I mean, I can't think of any other genuine time where you would do that, by the way. I really can't think about it. So here's Louis Welsh, by the way, at the very back of the field, going to be the last car to move into position and behind Jos Nordijk. And Thyman Schutter already sitting there, letting his tyres cool, is Jarno Otmir. He's joined in the front row by Nicholas Longy at the start of this race. Alvaro Caraton, remember, dropped all the way down five places after getting a five-place penalty for the fuel-burning incident. A bit of a shame for him, but this is one of the strangest starts ever. It's raining in Saudi Arabia. What will happen next? Who knows? Lights out in Saudi. Jarno Otmir gingerly moves away from pole position alongside him. Nicholas Longy in the run to turn one. Longy has a run up the inside, but cannot quite find a way through, and Otmir has the lead still as he tippy toe their way in the intermediate conditions around the opening sector of this Saudi circuit. Otmir leads, then Longy side by side, the two McLarens in the background, and Barry Budiman is ahead of Joshua Dobu in that particular battle. Behind that, Jake Benham going side by side with Daniele Haddad through the middle sector. Carefully does it, boys, because it's really stretching us out there, and Haddad at the end comes out on top. He's up to P5. Jake Benham, P6. Well, that was a relatively clean start considering the conditions, Dan. Yeah, Alvaro Caraton looking to challenge onto the back of Benham as well into the hairpin. Benham defending to the inside line to cover off an attack for, uh, from Aval Alvaro Caraton and uh, yeah in these conditions are very difficult to get a clean start but they've all managed that absolutely perfectly and of course DRS isn't going to be a factor today but if it were Jano Otme has already pulled out an 8 tenth of a second gap to Nicolas Longay there's battles further back behind because Tom Martinez is going wheel to wheel with uh, with, with Duncan Hoffland I think Perigny as well is trying to get involved they're still wheel to wheel throughout this second sector and hopefully by turn number 22 and 23 they can get this all sorted out because through the corners they they go and they manage to file out cleanly there I think as well just further up the road Luke Smith is trying to find an opening on Shanaka Clay for 11th position in towards turn number 27 following in the wheel tracks of the Aston Martin in towards the braking zone he goes to the outside line Luke Smith in his Williams car locking the front the inside front left and off the exit of the corner oh a slight bit of a slide from him there as at the end of the first lap Jan Otmir leads from a long game Barry Bowman in, in the third and then Josh Adou following in fourth yeah, some plenty of action, exciting stuff in the opening laps here in Jeddah. And up the inside goes Perigny. He locks the right front, touches Hoffland into a spin. That was coming, and now more contact as he and Parnell come together on the exit of one and two. But Perigny greedy on the brakes, and I suppose it's understandable. These drivers probably don't know the braking points here in Saudi Arabia in the wet. They've probably never practiced it, and that was a prime example. Perigny caught out, slides into Hoffland, and round goes the Alfa Romeo, or the Ferrari driver, into a spin, and he drops to the back of the pack. Disaster for Duncan Hoffman. Yeah, unfortunate there. He's not too far off the back, and if these guys ahead of him all fight it out, then he still could have an opportunity to get back into the race. Jan Otmir, meanwhile, at the front of the order, has already stretched a 1.4 second advantage to Nicholas Longay when he said he was going to start taking this seriously. Uh, he really did mean it because he is on fire tonight uh, at the moment. They're all following in a train. Of course, no DRS will be enabled. There's three uh, straights normally where they could use the drag reductive system, but that's not a possibility in the wets. 
as uh, throughout this part of the circuit, I'm trying to see who is finding a battle. I think Shinaka Clay, he's trying to see if there's an opportunity to overtake Wilson Ooh. Hughes, who has a bad exit from turn 23, as does Shinaka Clay. Now they're almost running wheel to wheel. It's nose to tail through here. Shinaka Clay is looking to the outside line, trying to get out of the spray possibly, and in towards the breaking zone. Oh, Wilson Hughes, he kept it uh, very tight to the left-hand side for quite some time, and I think Shinaka Clay was probably Ooh. worried about going into the rear of him, as at the end of lap number three, it's Yano Otmir once again with a uh, fastest lap. Meanwhile, behind that, it's all sorts of action. We're almost three wide going down the start finish street. Sammy Perigny in there, Tom Martinez and Danny Beresney too. Going into turn one, Perigny up the inside of Danny Beresney and up to 14th place. This time doesn't run into a Ferrari at turn one and is through on Beresney and up into 14th place. Plenty of excitement, I've got to say, in the midfield at this start of the race. At the start of the race, plenty of action in damp conditions. Not something you often see with the DRS not being enabled, but... Yeah, great to see the drivers all struggling to find the grip out there. And I suppose that's the reason why there's so much action, because they're all still learning out there. Oh, and we've got a change of the second place. Brunemand through on Nicholas Longy and into second place. And Longy is uh, really struggling. Otmir now 2.6 up the road. What is going on with Nicholas Longy? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's happened there. He might have had a slide uh, coming onto the, the short little DRS straight. And then that's allowed for Barry Brunemand to get by. Uh, because he's got no visible wing damage, uh, does Nicholas Longay, and it's not showing up on Taz either. Uh, so Jan Otmir, that's just handed him a, a free second on the rest of the field, uh, currently flying at the minute. Meanwhile, uh, Josh Adou has got some defending to do from Daniele Haddad in the Aston Martin because this is a battle for fourth position at the minute. ERS not as effective in the rain, but he's trying to use it down this straight to possibly get a run in towards turn number one. As here comes Haddad looking to the outside line in turn number 27. Uh, Josh Adou defending to the left-hand side, but off the exit, Daniele Haddad is going to look. It is going to be Adou making the corner first, and he is still ahead, but he runs slightly deep. Jake Benham as well trying to find an opportunity. We're seeing some great action here on lap number four, but I think Josh Adou just about for the time being has managed to defend from Haddad's onslaught attack throughout the final sector but it's not all over and he's still not got a safety net to any driver in front of him yeah incredible plenty of action out there you don't expect to see action like this in the first sector it's usually pretty much single file but they're all battling so much struggling to find the grip we we're on board earlier on with Hughes and uh, Shinaka Clay going through 22 and 23 and all they were doing was sliding the rear and now look at Adolu, he's gone wide, Haddad senses the opportunity, he's going to go up the inside through 13 and now he'll follow him on through this slalom like section of the racetrack and uh, can Haddad fight any way through on Josh Adolu, he has to tuck in behind at the minute but this is really exciting stuff in the middle of the field, now they'll slalom their way down to the infamous chicane of turn 22 and 23. Is Haddad going to be able to put himself into a position to challenge into turn 27? Oh, look at that, so much more confident than Josh Adobu reeling him in through that section, but there's the slide we saw from his teammate on the exit. And now Haddad has got a lot of work to do. He wants to gain and gain and gain and make that move in Adobu. He goes to the outside line, tries to switch to the inside, thinks better of it. Are we going to see a switch back from Haddad? No, we're going to see him try and go right round the outside of Josh Adobu. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And it's a beautiful move. And he moves up a place, although Adobu ain't giving it up. Look at Jake Benham picking up the double toe in between the pair of them tries the outside line decides to break cautiously Adobu won't give it up and there's contact now between he and Haddad but somehow on the exit of the corner they remain how they started the pit straight wow what drama yeah a lap of brilliance from these three drivers it's allowed for Alvaro Caraton on his charge back through the order after he took his penalty uh, in the part of qualifying. He's managed to get close as I think Wilson Hughes and Luke Smith is that going wheel to wheel. It's Perigny. Oh, that couldn't have ended well and it hasn't. Both of them, the pair of them off the circuit now and they're going to have to sheepishly rejoin uh, way, way down the order in 19th and 20th and I don't know who's at fault there. I don't think we can pin the blame on anyone at the moment. Wilson Hughes manages to overtake Perigny though. Uh, but both of them way, way down the order now. Uh, but back to the battle that we saw previously. That was some spectacular racing. And Josh Adobu struggled to keep up with Haddad now, who's managed to stretch his advantage to 1.1 seconds, leaving the Welshman uh, vulnerable to his good friend Jake Benham. Uh, both these guys coming up through Xbox, and I think, yeah, no, Josh is not going to try and fight this in towards 22. Yeah, he backs out, lets Benham through. There was no signs of, uh, 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 of a fight there from Josh Adobu. Maybe he'll be a bit more aggressive with Caraton in behind. Uh, that being said, though, 
Josh Ado is closing right back up to Jake Benham in towards turn number 27. He switches to the outside line in towards the breaking zone. And uh, we'll see what he can do off the exit of the final corner as he's right on the rear diffuser of Jake Benham. No DRS to be activated this time by, but he switches it towards the right-hand side. Can't find the run, and they're still equal on pace. And in towards the first corner, Josh Ado, can he go around the outside? He tries it. He tries to break later. There's no opportunity for him, though. Josh Otobu cannot fight that position back. I'm really, really enjoying this. Some of the action we're seeing uh, outside the top three places is absolutely fantastic. All the way down the field. And I think it's just down to the challenge that's been laid down to the drivers here. They're just not used to racing around this racetrack. And they're sliding so much. They're all both looking around, searching for grip while scrapping with one another. And it's been a great watch so far. And Otobu... Now, definitely the man struggling out there the most in the top places. And he's now got Alvaro Canaton on his case. And you wouldn't be surprised if he is going to follow through pretty soon as well. So, Canaton getting behind Adobu. Now, we saw Adobu not really fight Jake Benham into turn 22 and 23. My guess would be because if they did fight, it would have been an airplane crash through there. Because, you know, that really is single file stuff. But here is Canaton anyway, gaining on the back of Adobu. Is he going to try the same move into 22 and 23? He'd be a brave man to try it. He's getting closer, but he's going to wait for turn 27. And again, Adobu, like we saw previously, really struggling on the entry to that turn 22, 23 chicane. And now Canaton is all over him, and you fancy him to make the move. Again, Adobu covers the inside line. Canaton's going to have to go the long way around. Is he going to maybe cut back on the exit? Looks like it. Adobu on the inside. Canaton with the switcheroo at the hairpin. Adobu gets on the curb, and now Alvaro Canaton will pull alongside him, and he should get that move completed on the run down to turn one. Adobu, though, back into the slipstream behind him, but not quite close enough to make the move. Behind that, Shanaka Clay closing in on the back of Pedreño, but not close enough. Tidy stuff from Canaton. A textbook switch back at turn 27. Yeah, that's three laps in a row that Josh Adobu's lost a position down at turn number one, so he's struggling in these uh, wet conditions. Uh, that he'll be the uh, next target of Rune Pedreño, who's uh, only a few tenths off the back of the McLaren car. So he's uh, seemingly struggling at this point, the Welshman. Uh, we'll see if he can maintain a points-paying position as through the first sector they go. Rune Pedreño keeping tight-knit to Josh Adobu, as is Shanaka Clay. Of course, in a championship fight, qualified outside the top 10. As uh, Pedreño off the inside at turn number 13. It's always had a nightmare there and off the exit of the corner. Oh, my word. I thought uh, Pedreño would try and make an opportunity stick. But uh, no, there was no option for him there. But he is closing to the rear, almost touching the uh, the rear diffuser of Josh Adobu's McLaren who uh, once again is losing time to his rivals because here comes Pedreño down in towards turn number 22 th through the slalom like part of the circuit. It's always defending to the inside. Pedreño can't find an opportunity surely around the outside. No, it's not going to stick. And Shanaka Clay now seizes an opportunity as he tries to look for a move in towards uh, the next part of the circuit, the final sector where normally DRS will be enabled. Josh has always managed to get off Scott free for the time being, but in towards turn number one, surely there's going to be some kind of onslaught from Pedreño and Clay and Weigang and Luke Smith as well fighting in behind. Luke Smith goes up the inside of the Alpine and uh, he has to tuck back into the wheel tracks of Weigang. Here comes Pedreño now down in towards turn number one on Josh Adobu. No opportunity and somehow they all stay the way they were despite a tantalizing lap of racing. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant stuff here in PSGL. Gonna, gonna be honest, at times the racing in the top level can be quite watered down because it can be quite tactical ERS management but this is so different it's great to see the wet conditions have really made it uh, a real variable it's flung everything up in the air and we're watching these drivers battle side by side in sections of the racetrack you just wouldn't see normally in the dry conditions and it is providing a really exciting race loving it here uh, Josh Adobe is still running in seventh but I believe he's got a bit of damage I'm hearing not too sure if it's 100% the case, but he's certainly struggling out there in P7. And he's got a real train behind him. Pedreño, Clay, Vigang, Smith, Martinez, Nordyke, all within a second of one another in a big line. 
and Adobu is slowly but surely destroying their races as Wilson Hughes is having a day to forget a uh, three second time penalty Thymon Schutter and Josh Adobu also have time penalties but Pedreño pretty soon you feel is going to make that move Adobu again as you'd expect struggling through that section look at that oh. that's like Colin McRae that's unbelievable from Adobu through there just about holds on to it though but now he's got Ruben Pedreño on his coattails Pedreño round the outside he goes maybe now try and switch back like we saw from Caraton, Adobo covers that line though, doesn't make it possible for Ruben Pedreño, who'll just have to tow him along in the slipstream and go for the move into the first corner. What action we're seeing here in PSGL throughout the midfield. Pedreño forced to the outside line on Josh Adobo. Can he go right round the outside of the McLaren man? Of course he can. Oh, that oh. must be a great move, but he's cut the corner, gets a penalty, ah. and that invites Shinaka Clay now to get involved. What a battle this is. Clay up the inside. Oh, and then Pedreño into oh. Adobo. They both go across the runoff area and Clay takes one maybe two drivers absolutely unbelievable stuff here oh no room for Drenio going into the back and he has got wing damage 18% on the uh, on the front on the on the left hand side of the front wing he's got a buck for that one heartbreak for Pedreño to get that penalty uh, to get that bit of wing damage Josh Adobu's also picked up another warning through there so he's going to be uh, he's going to want to get that removed by the end of the race I saw someone asking in uh, in chat actually what uh, penalties everyone had or what warnings oh, you know what? Oh, got two off. warnings oh, Adobu's off yeah, he's gone way off the track. He's, he might actually be planning nah, a retirement. Stopping. Is he planning a retirement? Okay, so Ado was stopping. And yeah, there he is. He's letting everyone go. And yeah, yeah I think that was oh. coming, wasn't it, Dan? Yeah, and uh, he's come out just in front of Pedreño there. And, uh, I mean, uh, oh, I'm seeing, sorry, Simon Vigang is closing to Shinaka Klee. I don't think the battles end here, Andy. Oh. I think uh, Ado's going to call it a day. Here goes Vigang. No put, no fight. Put up by uh, by by Shanaka Clay, and meanwhile on lap number ten, Jan Ort was just tr cruising. He's set another fastest lap of the race. Uh, he's absolutely flying at the minute. There's too much going on really to actually keep yeah, track who? of where everyone is here. But Jan Ort, you who? Oh, that guy that was at the start of the race at the front. Oh yeah, we forgot about him. <laughs> it's all happening behind him, isn't it? At the minute, Simon Vigang up to P7, Shanaka Clay eighth. Luke Smith, Tom Martinez and Joost Nordijk all in this little battle. But there he is, out front, untroubled. And I've got to say, this is a vintage Altmere performance. That's sensational. He's 4.2 seconds ahead of Barry Brunemad after 10 laps. This is absolutely sensational from Jarno Altmere. He's disappearing up the road. What a performance, Dan. It's a real uh, Hamilton 2020 vibe that I'm getting out of Jarno Otmir when uh, the driver and the car just mesh together perfectly and uh, he has really nailed these interchangeable conditions. Uh, I, I, I was talking just before we uh, saw Adobu go off the circuit about the warnings that the drivers have. Uh, currently, I think everyone on circuit has got a warning. I was going to say Perigny doesn't. He's ju literally just picked up one now. Uh, but Jan Otmir, Barry Burman, they both have two warnings to their name. Uh, Longe and Haddad have both got one warning. Then Jake Benham has two warnings, and it's a bit of a mess uh, as you get further down the order. The most currently belongs to Time and Shooter with five warnings. He's already got a three-second time, uh, time penalty to his name. One more warning. That's going to be six seconds. So the drivers have always got to worry about uh, the track limits here because if they put one step wrong, one foot wrong then they're going to be unfortunately out of contention yeah and here we got Liam Parnell and Danny Bentesney outside the points at the minute having a little bit of a scrap for P12 and P13 it's been really exciting stuff this I've, I've really enjoyed watching these guys outside the top 10 scrap away in battle Parnell not close enough sorry uh, Bentesney not close enough to repass Parnell on this occasion but, pardon me but finally Dan it does look like it's starting to, to settle down a bit outside, uh, sorry, in that midfield area. It's taking its time. Seeing that, Jos Nordijk's pretty close to the back of Tom Martinez, who is now into the points. Well done, Tom Martinez. Fair play as Jake Benham picks up a three-second time penalty. And going by the warnings you were reading out, Dan, I think there's a very good chance we could see a few penalties to come yet. Yeah, absolutely. And I am I'm looking at, uh, at Barry and Jarno to be getting those if they're going to be pushing later on in the race if they find their way into a battle you know I, I do worry about uh, about penalties potentially coming their way but it's also good to see also inside the top 10 Tom Martinez uh, really nice to see him in that sort of position I'm just trying to see 
uh, where the standings are. I don't believe he's scored any points so far this season. I don't even know if he's raced in the top tier. Uh, but he can join Will Lewis on uh, on a solitary point with his finish at the moment. Unless jo Joost Nordijk has anything to say about it. Because he's closing to the rear of the Alpha Tower. Of course, crashing in qualifying. Joost Nordijk was eliminated in Q1. Martinez saw himself into Q2. But now they're locking horns on circuit. Because here comes the Alpha Romeo of Joost Nordijk on the Alpha Tower. Of Tom Martinez to the outside at turn number 27. Can Nordijk keep his foot in around the outside? He goes spectacular from Joost Nordijk. Tom Martinez didn't put up too much of a fight. Because uh, he knows that Joost Nordijk is the quicker driver at the moment but saying that he's following in the wheel tracks and in towards turn number one Tom Martinez is going to see another opportunity oh. around the outside that switches to the inside for turn number two but Nordijk around the outside he holds that position and through the first sector where it's so difficult to overtake I think Tom Martinez he's going to back out graciously there but really really nice battling between the pair of them yeah absolutely love it it's been great to watch it's been refreshing to watch seeing all these guys battle away in the midfield it's been really exciting and Martinez trying what Pedreño tried and got a three second penalty. Martinez a little bit closer to making it work but unfortunately couldn't quite manage it. I tell you, if someone goes around the outside into turn one, they're getting move of the day from me. That would be a super move as Wilson Hughes forgettable afternoon continues. He gets another three second time penalty. You've just joined us folks on another one. <laughs> uh, just, if you just joined us folks, uh, we are on lap 12 out of 25. We're at half race distance here and we have got wet weather in Jeddah. Yep, incredible, I know. No, you don't need to refresh your stream. It is actually raining here in Jeddah, and it is planned to rain for the entirety of the Grand Prix. So a real test flung at the drivers, and it's a test that this man, Jarno Otmia, is passing with flying colours at the minute. I'm beginning to wonder if he's the only man in this field that practices in the wet for Jeddah. <laughs> he's flying. Yeah, and I think uh, he was purple in Sector 2 on that last lap somehow, as... Uh... Uh, I don't know how he does it. You know, he's just continually going quicker on his runs. As uh, time and shoot turn, Danny Berezny having a little bit of a scrap for uh, P13. No points for this pay for these positions. I think Duncan Hofflin as well is trying to get involved. It's all Ferrari power down in the uh, outside of the point paying positions. hofflin has gone round his teammate of Berezny and could find an opportunity on Shooter as through turn number two. Oh, that's textbook, surely, if he gets the run on the outside line and in towards uh, the next left-hander. Oh, he broke a slight bit later. Shooter's gone deep and off the circuit. And now Duncan Hofflin could find an opportunity. He's all over the back of the Alfa Romeo and surely now through the next part of the circuit he's going to get a good run Wilson Hughes out of this race retiring in the pit lane that's a third retirement of the day Simon Shooter manages to hold on to P13 but Duncan Hofflin fair play to him he gave it a good go yeah I like that from Hofflin I like that switch back attempt on the exit of one and into two if, he put, if that paid off that would have a lot of respect that would have been pretty impressive I'm actually gutted he never pulled it off because it really would have been superb uh, unlucky Duncan Hofflin good attempt at an undercut move there that didn't quite work out what about further up through the field how is Joost Nordyke getting on he looks pretty close to the back of Luke Smith he's been making some really good progress Joost Nordyke clearing Tom Martinez and now leaving him behind and chasing down Luke Smith for ninth position in this race so what can he do then as he gets ever closer to the back of the Williams man Luke Smith is he going to try and down the inside, oh, he is going to try down the inside, oh, I thought he was going to wait till the pit straight, but he thought about it, locked the right front tyre, and in the end, for going for it early, he's paid for it, because he's now dropped right off the tail of Luke Smith, and that move doesn't look like it'll be happening on this occasion, Dan. No, but he is close, uh, yeah, he's about three tenths back, so no, he's not going to go for an opportunity, Tom Martinez got close to the rear of uh, Joost Nordijk there, manages to just about avoid him, but still, all following in this train for ninth position. About five, se oh, sorry, three seconds adrift to Shanaka Clay, who's uh, following in the wheel tracks of Simon Weigang. They exchanged positions a few laps ago, uh, but at this point, I think the tyres are not going to be in the best condition. They probably lost quite a bit of treading, and uh, surely they're going to start to feel like slick soon, I think, on lap number 14. Uh, the drivers are going to split this race 50-50 and uh, come into the pits at some point. And I imagine it is going to be this lap or next lap. I don't think they can go to the end. And uh, they're not going to be holding out for any uh, for any dry conditions because it's going to stay like this throughout the rest of the evening. We'll just have to wait and see who decides to tempt fate and come into the pit lane early. 
Uh, but meanwhile, on circuit, Jost Nordijk using up some of his battery to close to the rear of Luke Smith. He's about three tenths adrift through the slaloming, uh, through the slaloming second sector, and he really is pushing on this lap because he's oh dear. Yeah, no, that was a bad run through there. Bad run for Luke Smith as well. Jan Ottman's gone and cracked out another fastest lap. I was talking about how the tyres are dead. This man goes quicker instead. That is a masterclass. This, this, no, this is a masterclass. That is a term that gets flung around quite a lot, the word masterclass. Uh, but that really is. This, this is a masterclass. Let, let, let's make no mistake about it. We are watching greatness here. A masterclass from Jarno Ottmier against a very, very strong field. I tip my cap to him if he continues this and completes it. This is a masterclass. Joost Nordijk, four tenths off the back of Luke Smith. Not quite close enough to make the move, but this is where the action is at the minute in the battle for ninth and tenth. I wonder, Dan, given there's a bit of a field spread in the top places, will any of the top six, seven, eight drivers maybe try and go long and stretch them out and do a full race distance on them, or is that just extremely unrealistic? I think normally the uh, the intermediate tyres have about the same life as the mediums, but that being said, from what I'm seeing on Taz, they're on about 17, 18%. I don't know how accurate that is. Some of them are on 0%, zero, zero actually the top nine all are coming up as 0%, but Nordic. Uh, for some reason, John Evans in this race. That's uh, Tom Martinez that's appearing on my screen. I don't know why that's the case. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, I think they they should have to come into the pit lane at some point. Maybe uh, so, maybe some of the uh, the more experienced league racers can uh, can chime in in the chat now because uh, I'm a bit lost at the minute. One thing I am sure of though is Jos Nordike closer than ever to Luke Smith, and he's had a much better run through turns 22 and 23. And off the exit, he'll be following in the wheel tracks of the Williams car here. Uh, this is one of the only battles we actually got on circuit at the moment. So we've got to savor this while we can. As here we go in towards turn number 27. Yos Nordyke looking to make a switchback move. And Luke Smith parks it on the apex. Does a good job to cover off the advantage. But now in towards turn number one. Yos Nordyke. He's, uh, he's closing. He's closing. He's looking to the outside. Will he make a dummy? Indeed he does. Going to the inside is Yos Nordyke. Locking the front left in towards the first corner. Luke Smith. Goes deep on the brakes and off the exit of turn number two. They're going to run wheel to wheel. Oh, close to contact. Yo's Nordyke sliding there. Luke Smith hangs on for the time being. But uh, still, Nordyke following in the wheel tracks ever so close throughout the next part of the track. The uh, slowest they'll ever go in the first sector here. Can Yo's Nordyke find an opportunity to get past the Williams, who's making his car uh, as wide as possible around here as in towards turn number 13, I don't think Nordyke's got any fight left in him at this point. It's brilliant. It's brilliant defensive driving from Luke Smith. It really is. The way he parked it on the apex, he knew what Nordyke was going to try and do coming out of turn 27. Parked it brilliantly. Nordyke then tried all the other tricks in the book. The switch back into turn one. Tried to make it work. But again, staunch defense from Luke Smith. Very impressive. Enjoyed watching that. And again, as I said earlier on, it feels great to see these drivers racing like this. As I've said before, in eSports and in the top leagues, very often it's, it's, it's shallowed down, the, the, the racecraft from the drivers. It's all about ERS management and then breeze past with DRS. It's so good to see these drivers getting the elbows out, going for switchbacks into the braking zones and on the exit of corners. It's brilliant to see, and it really is contributing to the entertainment tonight. Here comes Tom Martinez now. Is he close enough on Joost Nordic to get back into the points? He's going to try and do that going into turn one. I don't think he'll be close enough. Who is close enough, though, is Duncan Hofflin behind Diamond Shooter, and he's going to try and go the outside again. He'll maybe now cut back because shooter has gone deep, and he will do it this time. A move at turn one at last, and Hofflin is through on Thyman Shooter, or is he? The Alfa Romeo not giving it up. He'll have to now. Hofflin's through. Simply lovely from Duncan Hofflin there. Finds himself another position into P13. Of course, being eliminated in Q1 was not the, uh, the best moment so far this race, but he is having his uh, opportunity to shine with some of the best, of course. A, uh, a title contender not too long ago on F1 2020 against uh, one of his rivals racing here tonight, Wilson Hughes. Of course, they went uh, for quite some time, and I think season 28, that was when they were uh, they were battling it out. Yeah, it was Yost in uh, season 27 fighting Wilson, and then uh, Duncan in season 28 
course, Wilson Hughes coming on top in both of them. But it's good to see that Duncan Hoffman now on the PC platform, fighting it out with, uh, once again, another PS4 driver in Time and Shooter. Everyone, I love it, everyone collates onto the PC platform to uh, have one big mega grid. I guess you could say the F1 Super League. Yeah, meanwhile, meanwhile, out front, that's another fastest lap for Jarno Otmer. He is pumping them in Jesus. lap after lap. This is ridiculous. Purple, 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 purple. 5.6 seconds now ahead of Barry Bunnemann. And this is Barry Bunnemann he's 5.5 seconds ahead of. I mean, I mean, it really is one of the best there is in Barry Bunnemann. Otmer at the minute making them look ordinary it really is sensational what a performance it, and to be in the commentary box witnessing this is something special look at him he's flying what a performance absolutely this is uh really one of the best i think we've ever seen yano up here today he's just been so cool calm and collected uh once he got over the drama of the first lap having nicholas longe on his inside he's had no contest whatsoever and he's just been running his race. This is a real, uh, a real special drive. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting things. I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, about Jim Clark here. You know, in, in Belgium, 63, I think, when he finished five minutes ahead of everyone else. Of course, it's not quite as extreme uh, as back in the 60s, but it is five seconds. And when we had Q2 times of being eliminated by one tenth of a second, you know, that is something special from Jano Otmir. He pulls it out of the bag once again. He's just got. Uh, at this time by, he's got seven laps to go, and to, uh, eight laps to go actually, until he wins a third race in a row. Yeah, he's really lifted his game. I've, I've got to ask you, do you remember that Jim Clark race well? Did you watch oh, it? Did you watch it live? Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, uh, my favourite race. Look, I wish I did because uh, Jim Clark, being a Scotsman myself, one of the greatest Scottish sportsmen of all time, and uh, yeah, I wish I was around back then to see it. Uh, top, top driver is Jim Clark. Nice to see him getting a mention, Dan, so thanks for that one. Uh, comparing him with the best in the world of esports at the minute, Jarno Ockmier with that 5.1 second advantage. But let's get back to the action uh, in the midfield where it has just been sensational tonight. There's no other word for it. Some of the action in this uh, midfield has been brilliant and Duncan Hoffman's been one of the drivers providing it. Now racing with Liam Parnell in the fight for P12. I tell you what, it's great to see that these drivers don't quit. And it's great, Dan, because, you know, very often in the lower tiers, lower leagues, drivers outside the points and other series, they, they quit because they're not fighting for any points. But it's all about pride, isn't it? P12, P13, still putting on a great show for our viewers. So I've got to respect that. And, and the midfield tonight have been excellent. Oh, and there's Parnell going a bit wide. And now Hoffland is in position to challenge. Yeah, absolutely. Off the exit of turn number 13, he is looking close to the rear of Liam Parnell. Of course, uh, rival teams, uh, a part of uh, VSR is Duncan Hoffland. Then uh, Liam Parnell's got his own team of uh, Parnell Racing. So both these guys, deep-rooted rivalry at the minute. And we'll see what he can do as he challenges onto the rear of the Red Bull. In towards uh, turns number 22 and 23. I've got a, a brilliant helicopter cam shot. Hopefully you've got something similar here as through down in towards turn number 26 and 27 in towards the breaking zone of the final corner. Duncan Hoffland too far back to make a move this time by, but we'll see if he can find an opportunity. He's gone very deep on the apex and uh, I think he's going to have a bit less speed than, than Liam Parnell, but he's in the wheel tracks. He's got the slipstream using the ERS. Here comes Hoffland down the main straight and looking to the outside line. I don't think Liam Parnell's got too much fight as into the breaking zone. Hoffland gets there first and the Ferrari man really putting on a show for us tonight and he's found another position and uh, this time it is on the Red Bull car of Liam Parnell. Yeah, if he carries on at this pace, you might be challenging for the final few points in this race. Well, the final point between Jos Nordijk and Tom Martinez who've been in a race long battle So and Luke Smith too in ninth so there's a chance for Hoffland if he can continue this pace then he might be challenging for a few world championship points so we'll keep an eye on him and see if he can make the progress but yeah certainly been putting on a show tonight as has the likes of Nordyke, Martinez, Smith Shinaka Clay at points as well I mean it's been great really really enjoyed it out there on the racetrack uh, it's almost time to vote for your driver of the day folks but I think that's a bit of a stupid question Dan isn't it yeah <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not. I'm not too sure who uh, driver that is going to be. I just can't can't put my finger on it. You know, uh, it, <laughs> I think it's uh, 
if, if, if he stays like this and it, it continues to stretch an advantage, uh, then I think Yano Otme, he's got to be in the question. You know, if he sets another fastest lap by the end of this race, uh, I'll think of something to do. Uh, but I, I will do something if Yano Otme sets another fastest lap. And you know what? He's even stocked up the ERS. I think he's going to push at some point here. Yeah, well, here is Shinaka Clay, and he's watching his championship rival disappear down the road in the title fight at the minute. Another iffy qualifying for Clay, following up what we saw back in Hungary. And at the minute, it's down in eighth place for him with Simon Vigang right in front of him. And he needs to get through and, you know, cut the, the deficit. He's going to concede here in the championship battle and get that move done on Vigang. He's been following him now for many laps, hasn't he? So, you know, I wonder how long it'll take before he reels him in. I should also mention, by the way, Simon Peregni uh, pitted for new tyres, six lap fresher tyres. And I did notice he was like 20 seconds off the back of the train. He's now only, what, seven or eight seconds off the train, so, uh, you know, he's uh, beginning to make some progress, so I wonder if there is any worth in the fresh tyres. I don't think we're going to see them now with four laps to go, but I wonder if anyone had tried it, if uh, it would have made any progress for them, but at the minute, Shinaka Clay behind Simon Vagang and looking to make some progress. Duncan Hofflin now with the nine-tenths of Tom Martinez. He's within a second, so pretty soon he'll be joining Nordyke Martinez and Smith in that battle for P9. But in this fight for P7, it's Vigang versus Clay. Daniele Haddad also further up the road, getting within a second of Nicholas Longay. And he might be threatening Longay for the final podium spot pretty soon as well. So a, a few good battles developing in the closing moments of this race. But this is the one furthest up at the minute that we need to watch. Shinaka Clay behind Simon Vigang. The Alpine against the Aston Martin as they come round the final corner now. Is Shinaka Clay going to be close enough for a move? We'll have a look at the telemetry. He's not using his battery at the minute going down the street. He's getting closer to Simon Vigang, but he's not getting close enough to a move on this occasion, Dan, is he? No, he is. Very, very close to the rear, though, of the Alpine and off the exit. Uh, yeah, he's just not quite there thus far, but we'll see what he can do as in towards the first sector he goes. Chinaka Clay following in the wheel tracks of Simon Vigang. Really difficult to follow around this circuit. Uh, in the dry by itself, but in the wet, it's a, it's a whole other challenge. And yeah, he's uh, he lost quite a bit of time actually to Vigang. He'll make it up surely in towards, uh, in towards the slaloming second sector. We'll have to wait and see. Liam Parnell, another penalty, unfortunately. For him, well, that might actually have been his first of the day. Uh, so that's going to be him in ruins and uh, out of the fight for points. But still, seventh position is up for grabs between Shinaka Clay fighting against Simon Vigang. Vigang slightly up the road. And uh, I'm just trying to see who has got more ERS. It is Clay. He's got more resources to play with. And he is in the slipstream. So even though he's a little bit adrift at this moment in time, don't count him out. But he is losing more time, unfortunately. And I don't think this time by he'll be close enough to make a move, Andy. Yeah, doesn't look like he will be. There's a quick note for everyone if you're tuning in uh, on the penalty situation. There it is on the left-hand side. Jake Benham, Luke Smith, Tom Martinez, Liam Parnell, Danny Beresney and Simon Vagang have three seconds. Diamond Shooter has nine. Louis Welsh has six seconds worth of penalties at this stage of the Grand Prix. That is things as they stand. Position changes, there it is. Up eight, Jos Nordijk. He's been one of the contenders for driver of the day. You can see he's really made some progress into the points and is in a bit of a battle with Luke Smith behind this at the minute. Let's have a little look at that. He's in a bit of a racetrack. The racetrack is a bit more easy to overtake. Not anymore. He's not. He's in turn number one. So it's not quite happening there. So Shinaka Clay close to making a move uh, for P7 and 8. Jos Nordyke close to making a move for P9 on Luke Smith. Tom Martinez just behind them. And Duncan Hofflin, we thought he'd maybe reel these guys in. He's now dropped outside a one second window, no DRS of course at this stage uh, in intermediate conditions, but he has dropped out with the window. We thought we would maybe see him close in, but at the minute it's not happening. Meanwhile, out front, remember this guy? He's leading, I barely had a chance to pick him up all race long. He's just took off at the start and nobody's seen him since. Jarno Watmir in the lead, two laps to go after this one. Yeah, and he's uh, actually improving once again, well, no, he's not improving, but if he sets a quicker final sector, then it'll be another fastest lap on the 23rd lap of this Grand Prix. Uh, neither, none of these guys have pitted. There hasn't been enough wear. Uh, we were considering it as they cross the line. <laughs> he does it again. By two thousands, it's an improvement, but Yala Watmir has set another fastest lap 
and he's got two more runs at it. Oh my word, this man, he, he's on another level, Andy. I, I can't comprehend it. This is, the ex this is the, an example of a complete performance. This is what this is. It is a complete performance, a masterclass. It is, quite simply, why this man is the best. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. I'm going to keep it simple. This is why he's the best. This is why. You know, everyone's very closely matched in the world of F1 esports. Everyone is. And in the world of PSGL, they're all very closely matched. There's nothing between them. It's a few hundredths. It's a few tenths here and there. And it's when they're flung into desperate or different situations that you really find out the difference. And the difference here is six seconds in an unexpectedly wet Jeddah Grand Prix. That is, that is it. That is the difference. This is where you see the difference, and you're seeing it played now. Jarno Otmia in the lead of this race by six and a half seconds. Not often you see this in PSGL. It has been sensational from him, and he's on his way now. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think for the final lap, we've got to follow Jarno Otmia throughout the entire tour because he's hardly been on our screens at this point. You know, he's, he's stretched his advantage throughout the entire race. He had one fight in this, in this Grand Prix, and that was in through to <laughs> five tenths of an improvement for Jarno Otmia. How this man. Okay. Yeah. I said I'd do something. Uh, if you are not want me, I'll make a tweet and at uh, the most light reply, that will be my uh, my forfeit because I have to do something to commemorate the, what this man has achieved. Yano Watmir is going even quicker on lap number 25 of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Cast our minds back to France where he was stole uh, his win was stolen by a, what was a very controversial penalty. We had a break week in between. He came back through Hungary to take the win there and then uh, in Austria he had everything thrown at him and he took the win yet again he has won two times in a row he's a three-time PSGL champion and he is a two-time F1 esports champion if you don't know this man's name already it is Jarno Otmir and you better not forget it because it has been a sublime performance absolutely perfect he's dotted his eyes and he's crossed his t's throughout the entirety of this he's got one more sector to go before he has won the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and surely he's going to be showboated a bit his twitch chat is going to be going crazy I can see the live chat at the moment is popping because through the final corner on lap number 25 it has been an absolute dominant performance from Jarno Otmir today as off the exit of the final corner for the final time and across the line check and flag falls for Otmir he is a three time winner this season it's Hungary, Austria and now Saudi Arabia Jarno Otmir on the top step of the podium once again wow wow Wow, wow, wow. That was probably, in my time commentating, the most complete, perfect performance I have seen. That was a masterclass. And I do not use the word masterclass lightly, folks. That was a masterclass. That is what you call a masterclass. It gets thrown around that term a lot. It gets thrown around far too easily. That is what that was, a masterclass, 6.8 seconds clear of Barry Buramand, one of the best there is, and Jarno Opmier has just wiped the floor here in PSGL tonight. He said after France he was going to lift his game, he was furious what happened, and well, you just don't upset this man because it just leads to him providing quite incredible performances. Bang! Victory in Hungary. Bang! Victory in Austria. And in the most emphatic style yet, victory in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. What a win for Otmia. He takes the victory. Jos Nordijk officially by the game gets driver of the day. I'm not having that. Jarno Otmia is driver of the day. And that was an absolutely masterful performance from Opnia, picks up the trophy, victory in the bag, does not get better than that, Barry Bruneman sees him for the first time since he saw him at the start of the Grand Prix on the podium, and what a performance that was, does not get any better than that, 
and Nicholas Longy completes the podium. What a message he has just sent out to his championship rivals. Jarno Otmia takes the victory by 6.8 seconds over Barry Bunneman. Nicholas Longy is third with Daniele Haddad in P4. Alvaro Caraton was fifth, 19.2 off the victory. Jake Benham, P6 for Mercedes. Simon Vagang was next with Shunaka Clay in eighth. And Joost Nordig and Duncan Hofflin completed the top ten. Luke Smith was 11th with Tom Martinez 12th. They both dropped outside the points with the penalties. Lee Parnell was 13th. Danny Beresney, 49 seconds. Danny Beresney, no less. One of the best out there. 49 seconds off the pace in 14th. Diamond Schutter, Louis Welsh, Simon Peregdi, and the drivers that failed to finish. Wilson Hughes, Ruben Pedreño, and Josh Edoe. Dan, where do we start with that? That was quite simply perfect. Absolutely. And uh, I was talking about how every esports has a certified GOAT. You know, uh, CSGO has Simple, uh, Rainbow Six Siege has Pengu, Overwatch has Jonak, F1 has Yano Otmir. This man, without a doubt, in anyone's mind, if, if you don't agree, I think you're, you're quite insane. Uh, to, to put it lightly, he is the greatest of all time, and this is history in the making. We need this man in for an interview more than ever because that was a spectacular drive on all counts, and I don't know if it will ever be topped. I can't wait to hear from him. Uh, I can't wait to hear from him uh, because that was so good. It was top, top, top drawer. And you know, I, I heard what you said there. He, he's the best out there. Um, I'm not going to lie, I saw Barry Bruneman at the start of this season and I've seen some of his performances of late and I thought, this guy, this guy's good. This guy's really going to take it to Jarno Otmia. But uh, since what happened in France, nobody's had an answer for him. I mean, this has just been relentless. Jarno Otmia, it has been him at his very best and it's going to take something very special to topple this man at the minute. He's in fine form. He leads the championship now. It took him a while to get going. Uh, and after what happened in France, it G'd him up pretty quickly. And he has got going. And in some style, Dan. That was very, very, very impressive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at, at the start of the season, I was firm in my choice that Barry Boerman will be champion. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you here. Is it too late to change my prediction in the championship? Yes. Because, <laughs> ah, no, no disrespect to Barry, he is still an incredible driver and he is still one of the greatest on the game at the minute. But there is no topping Jan Otme at the minute. And I think making the prediction that after Hungary, Jana would go on a complete tear uh, that, that I made, that might have been one of the best predictions I've ever made because it is true at the minute. We are living in Yano's world at the minute and uh, I'm just trying to see I'm trying to look in the waiting room I can see one man in there I see Yano at me surely we've got to get him in now drag him in Dan drag him in <laughs> speaking to him after that because uh, well that was quite simply ridiculous what we've just seen there Yano what a performance that was relentless you told me after the Hungarian Grand Prix a few weeks ago you weren't happy with what happened in France you said you were going to see and different Yarno, you're going to see you on top of your game. Since then, you've now won three races in a row. And that tonight was utter domination. I've got to ask you, is that one of the best performances you've ever had in any race? Yeah, probably. Um, it, it's up there, it's up there. I think I've had other really good wet races as well. Um, but yeah, at, at some point after seven or eight laps, I didn't need to push anymore. So. I took it a bit more uh, careful, as I had two track limit warnings and I wanted to save tyres in case of a safety car. So um, yeah, and then in the last two laps I went fully fully for it again. I pushed as hard as I could to, to try and get uh, the fastest lap, but I uh, couldn't beat Simon uh, for the fastest lap in the end, so that's unfortunate. But yeah, so uh, very good race. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, from from the race point of view, there's not much to talk about, was it? It was just take take the lead and then disappear up the road. But I mean, what's the secret? What is the secret? Because we know Barry Burman's a very, very, very strong driver. You know that. You've said it yourself. But you just put six point eight seconds on him, and, and and that that just sounds wild. Like, what's the secret? I take it you're not allowed to tell us. <laughs> uh, being Dutch. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Usually the, the Dutch guys are always really fast at the rain. I, I don't have a reason for it, but uh, yeah, it's just, just how it is, so. Incredible. I mean, I've got to say, I mean, you, you were in fine form throughout tonight. I mean, to be honest, being honest, I've been watch, watching from the start of the season, you looked kind of in qualifying, you were getting there, and then in Q3 you'd arrive, but tonight, Q1, bang, Q2, bang, Q3, bang, right at the very end. I just I just thought you were on it tonight. I, I take it you've been a, putting in a lot of practice for Jeddah. Is it a track you really enjoy because you, you were just in, in, in period's form tonight? Yeah, I really enjoy the track, but to be fair, I practice more for uh, Hungary um, and Austria. But um, yeah, Jeddah just felt good, had a good flow around there. Um, one of the first times on this game I was actually confident in, in qualifying. Uh, which it hasn't really happened since like F1 2020. So, yeah, just uh, I hope I can carry that into the next races as well, um, and then keep the race pace at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, very, very good. Dan, have you got any questions for Jan or me after that incredible performance? Uh, yeah, first off. A huge congratulations to you, Yano. I think that might be uh, the best race I've ever seen from a, from a single driver's point of view. That might have been the best drive I've ever seen in league racing. So uh, I really do I do comm I, I commemorate you for that. That was incredible. But uh, at one point, I think it was about lap number 20, I said that I would do a forfeit. Uh, uh, if you set another fastest lap, you continue... You, you decided to drop five tenths on our heads, so that was lovely. Uh, but I said I'd make it a Twitter poll. I'm actually going to leave that to you. So, uh, what 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 should my forfeit be in this one? Um, oi, that's a good one. Uh, next time you need to wear a Christmas uh, hat uh, during commentating of okay. the next PSL race. Okay, I'll, I'll have to order one then. So. Uh, Lovely. I mean, once again, a huge well done to you. And uh, that's all my questions for today. Why don't you dye your hair ginger? No, I'm all right, Andy. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, congratulations, uh, Jarno, on the win. Uh, looking forward now. Championship situation looking a lot stronger than it was a few weeks ago. Um, you must be really happy with that and going forward. And I mean, three wins in the spin. Can you make it four next time out? You, you certainly look to be in great form. Uh, yeah, that's the aim, of course. Um, I really like Spa and Zandvoort. Uh, those tracks are coming up, so I, yeah, I just love to roll league race around there. Um, with a longer race, race distance. So um, yeah, that's that's gonna be loads of fun. It's not gonna be easy, of course. Barbie is usually very fast around Spa, so is Jake. Um, so that's not gonna make it easy, but uh, we will see. So yeah. Well, congratulations on the victory. Not the most eventful race for you tonight in terms of drama, but certainly a very, very strong performance. Congratulations on the win and congratulations on extending that championship lead. We'll see you uh, next time out for the uh, Belgian Grand Prix. Thank you, thank you. Well, Jarno Watmia there giving his, his thoughts for that one, Dan. Uh, well... I mean, there wasn't much to talk about, was there, really? Apart from his performance, he was just scintillating from the get-go. Got the job done, picked up the victory. Uh, incredible performance. Mentioned to Barry Buramand, very, very strong driver. Congratulations to him getting himself on the podium. Uh, and, of course, Nicholas Longy in P3. We barely saw anyone from second to fourth all race long. It was quite spread out behind uh, Jarno Opmia. Uh, but what about the battles in the midfield, Dan? It was really, really exciting, refreshing to see the likes of Duncan Hoffland, Shanaka Clay, to name a few, Jos Nordyke, Tom Martinez, all involved in plenty of action. And it was refreshing to see because sometimes the action can be watered down with ERS management and breeze buys in the uh, on the long straights. But we had action in all sorts of areas of the track, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. It was lovely to see uh, sort of drivers that we don't normally see in uh, in the fight for for higher positions you know uh, it, it's great to see them in the limelight uh, sometimes so it was really nice to see that they were in those positions scrapping it out all together and uh, we got some good action out of it uh, which in a wet in a wet race that's pretty difficult and uh, that's only in PSGL F1 the very pinnacle of league racing yeah incredible exciting stuff next up then on the calendar it's the Belgian Grand Prix Dan and uh... We love that one, don't we? A fantastic race, a classic circuit of the Formula One calendar. And I'm sure we'll print plenty of drama there, won't we? 16th 
of March. So that's a week today. We're heading to that one. And uh, I tell you what, folks, if you like what you've seen, uh, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more action here from PSGL. The top tier here in PC comes to you every Wednesday night, 7 p.m. UK time. So I think we're touching 14K subscribers or very close to it. So be sure to subscribe and help us over that marker. But before we go, just a quick word because uh, I saw me and Dan are having a little bit of a here, aren't we? Uh, getting ready for this. Join our grid. Uh, we are going to be hosting a Fantasy League on the Grid Rival app, which is a motorsport fantasy league app. Uh, and PSG will be doing uh, PSGL will be doing an F1 2022 Fantasy League. So be sure to check it out at the link uh, shown on your screen now. And uh, if 100 people sign up for it, there will be a £50 prize for the winner. And I can tell you right now, Dan won't be getting it because I'll be beating him. Isn't that right? Uh, no, absolutely wrong, Andy. Uh, I'm going to completely smash you and uh, I'm going to smash everyone else and I'm going to take the win for myself. I can't wait for... Uh, for, uh, for Grid Rival to get underway in the 2022 season. Yeah, it should be good. It'll give us a chance to hype up for the start of the new Formula One season, that's for sure. You know, you know, you do that with the Premier League, don't you? The football, you always go and do that and get you hyped up for the new season. So, of course, hop over onto Grid, Grid Rival, hop over to the link we showed and join in. Myself and Dan will be in there battling it out for glory. Uh, but yeah, it should be exciting and look forward to it. But uh, anyway, that's all from myself, Ginger Andy and Dan Field tonight here. From the PSGL action here in Jeddah. It was a wet race. It was wild. It threw up all kinds of drama. But Jarno Altmir was still the man. They came out on top. That's all from us. Good night.